When we teach anglers to spot fish using hummingbird side imaging, we tell them that they're really looking for two things, the fish's primary sonar return and the fish's sonar shadow. In side imaging, the primary sonar return for a fish is simply a bright spot, not an arch like we're used to seeing in traditional 2D sonar. Individual fish will also cast a sonar shadow, a dark spot on the bottom that can't be imaged by the side imaging beam because the fish reflects so much sonar energy back to the transducer. It's really the combination of the bright sonar return and the dark sonar shadow that allows us to conclusively identify fish in side imaging. And of the two, I think that the sonar shadow can be more important and more informative. For example, when fishing over hard bottom areas, the bright sonar return from the fish can often be masked by the bright bottom, but the dark sonar shadow remains easy to see. In addition, the sonar shadow provides us with information about the fish's position within the water column, either close to the bottom or suspended higher off the bottom. When fish are close to the bottom, you'll see a very small distance between the dark shadow and the bright sonar return. Any separation at all guarantees that the object we're observing is a fish and not just a rock or something else sitting directly on the bottom. As fish rise higher in the water column, the separation between the bright sonar return and their dark sonar shadow increases. Fish that are close to the surface will often have large distances between their bright and dark spots. So remember, the distance between the bright sonar return and the dark sonar shadow tells us how high the fish is in the water column. Learning to make use of all the information that Humminbird Side Imaging provides not only helps us find fish faster, but also helps us figure out how to catch them.